What's going on guys? Welcome out to this channel that's all about architecture, engineering and construction. On this channel, we discuss information that is related to architecture, that is related to engineering, that is related to construction. So if you are looking for any information that is within that bracket, you're on the right place, okay? So in this video, we are going to actually be dissecting or understanding the hollow slabs which are actually some of the commonest slabs that we actually industry mainly for mid-level constructions of both residential and commercial buildings just like the slab that i'm standing on right now that we cast a few weeks ago okay so please stay on the video and understand every detail as i begin to explain everything about hollow slabs okay so basically a lot of you see a lot of high-rise commercial buildings and you see the slabs are very thin they're very slick and looking really very nice then you ask yourselves why in what scenarios do people use those solid slabs and also in what scenarios do people actually use these these hollow slabs okay of course here i'm having two max pans next to me i've arranged them in such a way that they mimic the way they actually supposed to sit on a slab so we have this max pan so we have several max pans running to the front and several max pans running to the back and then on this side we have several max pans running to the front and also several max pans running to the back okay so um there is this gap here in the middle this gap in the middle is where the concrete actually pours into when you are pouring concrete you realize it all pours and runs through this hole and fills all this space under and right at the bottom of the max pan is where we usually have the form work or the timber work. So basically the max pan is directly sitting on the timber. And then you also notice that there are iron bars, either one iron bar or two iron bars or three iron bars running in the middle of this this empty space that you see here. Uh, that, of course, that's basically depending on what the structure design is actually saying. But what this space is supposed to mean or is supposed to, 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 to be used for is that these these hollow parts that are running through here and also running through there continuously through the slab are actually acting as mini beams or small beams that are carrying the load which the slab is going to be subjected to and of course as you are casting the concrete you noticed in most of the cases the level of the concrete exceeds the max pan usually maybe by 50 millimeters or by 75 millimeters depending on what the structure design is actually saying okay so basically at the top you realize you don't see the max pans but at the bottom, after you have removed the, the foam work or the timber work, you'll see the max pans running, okay? Also, just to understand this max pan, uh, this max pan has this part which is called a wing, or you can call it a flange. This is the part that is supposed to hold the max pan in place after the concrete has dried and then you've removed the timber work down because initially this is basically sitting on the foam work or the timber work down here. So uh, these ones are supposed to hold it firmly onto the beam this beam is usually called a rib. In structural design, it's called a rib. It's the rib of actually the slab, okay? So that's why when they have removed the timber work and all that, you will see this hanging, yet it's actually not falling because it's being held tightly onto the beam by these two things. So to understand the function of max pans, we need to know that if we need to know that max pans are actually used to first of all reduce on the self weight of the building because they fill up the space that would rather have been filled by the concrete and also the other thing is to reduce on the cost of construction because imagine if all this thickness of the if all this thickness of the stub was to be cast with concrete it would really really be expensive but max pans come in handy and they play that role okay <laughs> Also, if you are to make a comparison between the hollow slabs and the solid slabs, you notice that in solid slabs we use a lot, much more reinforcement. Because remember, in most of the cases, you'll have to put reinforcement down and also reinforcement up. Uh, also, if you are to check about the spacing, you realize it's between maybe 10 centimeters to 20 centimeters. So that means after literally every 10 to 20 centimeters, you have iron bars. And in both directions, both are in the, in the X direction and in the Y direction. And yet if you are to compare with the hollow slabs, you only have reinforcement in one direction. And the spacing is much bigger because it's after every max span. 
that you actually put reinforcement bars so you realize you use much less reinforcement than uh, than it is when we are doing solid slabs so anyway in general solid slabs are usually more cost intensive than uh, holid than than hollow slabs 